17 can be a big week for sharp DFS players. There's 15 games on the main slate, but some games matter more than others. We'll help you avoid those traps and find the best values on the Football Guys Daily Fantasy Power Grid presented by DraftKings. John, maybe you can give us a little preview as, as to some of those games that do matter in our Vegas section. Tell us, what are the Vegas lines uh, informing you this week in DFS? Yeah, this is an interesting week. It's week 17. Look, it's it's probably along with week one, uh, the week where lines, maybe they matter the least. Um we have preconceived notions from four months of football, the way things will go. Um, but as we're going to talk about in this in this uh, episode, things get a little shaky and dicey with week 17. And, and that can be construed one of two ways. Either that's an advantage to a sharp player or uh, a potential disadvantage um, if you're not reading the, the tea leaves correctly. But, um, you know, strictly by definition, this week there are a handful of games with 50-point totals. Uh, those are Tennessee at Houston. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Derrick Henry tonight. Um, uh, you've got Las Vegas at Denver, which is a game that I like quite a bit. Minis uh, Minnesota at Detroit. So you've got a couple running backs there that are uh, certainly in play this week. Green Bay um, at Chicago and then Atlanta at Tampa Bay. Uh, Bruce Arian saying he's going to start and play all of his guys. So um, you've got those games I think are, are extremely interesting and kind of at the top of the list there, some of the uh, implied team totals, Tennessee, 32 points, Indianapolis playing Jacksonville. They're two touchdown favorites at home. So uh, we'll, we'll see whether uh, the Jonathan Taylor whisperer above me, uh, whether or not he's, he's going to call him tonight, but uh, 31, almost 32 points for those guys. Minnesota, we've talked about Tampa Bay. We've talked about and Baltimore. They've got, it's, it's funny week in week out, Baltimore has a high implied team total and they, they typically deliver on that. 28 and a half points this week, but who do you play from that team? Uh, we'll talk about uh, whether or not any of those guys are, are playable. And then at the other end, there are some pretty bad games too. Um, you know, Cincinnati, are they going to do anything against Baltimore? Baltimore's defenses look like they're getting healthy going into the playoffs. Um, Pittsburgh is going to sit a bunch of starters. We'll talk about how that um, impacts some of the things we're looking at. Jacksonville certainly isn't going to do anything. Um, that in, uh, that uh, uh, Jets and um, New England game, the, the total on that game is about 40 points. And the same thing for the Rams and the Arizona uh, Cardinals. So um, pretty big spread this week. Uh, the good news is there are a lot of games, 15 games on the main slate, and it's spread very evenly. So this is a week where uh, you could play, you could split your action up on early games, seven games, and late games, you could split it up that way as well. So a lot of different ways to go this week. And um, hey, it's 2021. So everybody gets lucky in 2021. It's got to be better than 2020. Um, we're going to talk about some quarterbacks. And uh, Devin, I'm going to pitch it to you first. But first, I want to tell our listeners about DraftKings. Uh, football is still here, and so is your shot at millions, thanks to our partnership with DraftKings. All new players can play free for millions with your first deposit. Here's how it works. Create your DraftKings DFS account and make a deposit. DraftKings will credit your account with a free entry to these contests. DraftKings, then when you draft your lineup, go for the millions in top prizes. Just go to dkng.co slash football guys to play. That's dkng.co slash football guys. Act quickly. This offer won't be around forever. Minimum $5 deposit, eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. So we're going to talk about quarterbacks. There's a few injuries here, but let's just mention the teams that are just not going to play their starters. It's Kansas City, Pittsburgh, and Buffalo is probably not going to get a full game out of their starters. These three teams really have nothing to play for. Buffalo is a little fuzzy because they've talked like maybe they'll play their guys a quarter and then switch to their backups, but you know, Kansas city, Pittsburgh, and Buffalo seem to have nothing to play for. And then that new England line moved a lot throughout the week. And it makes me a little nervous that new England may do something weird and not play sort of their starting lineup the whole game. So that being said, let's talk about some of the injuries here. Uh, Jared Goff is out. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick is out and Matthew Stafford looks iffy for the lions. Uh, got limited practice on right? Thursday and Friday. What's that? Ben Roethlisberger. I don't know if you mentioned him, but. Well, he's not going to play because Pittsburgh's there not playing any yeah. of their starters. Like, you know, obviously, you yeah. know, Kansas City's not playing any of their starters. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. don't start Mahomes. Um, that kind of stuff. 
So let's let's go to Devin. Let's talk about some quarterbacks. Who do you like? So we need to talk because there's, <laughs> let's I'm have a sure, heart to heart, Devin. I, I'm sure there's a guy that's going to be mentioned that's named Mitchell Trubisky, and I don't understand why, but we'll get into that talk in a little bit. Maybe okay. you guys don't have him on your list. Um, he's rating popular on some places, but that's a bit of a surprise. Anyway, don't play Trubisky. He's playing the Packers, and even though he's projecting high numbers anyway that was a, a bit of a diatribe um <laughs> let's go with deshaun watson how about that sure um, yeah he's my top guy by long shot if i could if i could tell you how many sacks the tennessee titans had in december what would you guys guess in december the month of december four games let's say three one whoa that sucks one sack they have 15 on the year Watson threw for 335 yards and four touchdowns earlier, um, earlier this year. He's sort of the guy that's like, I'm not going to call him Blake Bortles-esque, but he's a better fantasy quarterback than he is a real-life quarterback. He's a significantly better quarterback than Blake Bortles. Let me just yeah. throw that out there. But he 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 gets these ridiculous games, and he's he lost to the Bengals last week. Like, let's be real here. Um, and, and John talked about Tennessee having – uh, what was it, 32 points projected? That tells me that there's going to be a significant passing opportunity and potentially running opportunity if he's not being pressured for Deshaun Watson. Going down the list, I'm sure we're going to get crucified in the comment section. Matt Ryan, 5,900 <laughs> against Tampa Bay. Um, look, I mean, Tampa Bay's defense, the way to beat them is through the air. And they're playing their starters they're going to be shut down. And what's Matt Ryan done the last two weeks? 300 yards, two touchdowns, 360 yards, and three touchdowns, which was against that Buff, uh, Tampa Bay defense. So if I'm going down, I'm going Matt Ryan on DraftKings. I'm getting that 300 yard bonus. It's as he's one of the safest guys every week to get it, at least in the last two weeks when I've talked about him. But um, I'm going back there. The, uh, we've had some commenters say like, guys, I'm turning your show off if you mention Matt Ryan again. So uh, for those of you who stuck through that moment in the show, thanks. I appreciate it. Um, Phil, tell us about the quarterbacks you like this week. Sure. So I, I do like Watson. Uh, you know, he's, he's a good play for all the reasons that Devin mentioned. I'm a little bit nervous about him, though, because he did get banged up. I think it was his uh, his throwing elbow in the in the last game. And, um, you know, Romeo Cornell was like a, a little sketchy when it came to uh, Watson's chances. But what well, Watson's a gamer, you know, I, I don't think he's going to sit out. I think he's going to start. And I think if he does play that whole game, he's probably the top quarterback on the board. But because of that, like little five percent doubt that that I have, I think I would rather just pay up the uh, the 400 or is it 300 to get to Lamar Jackson? 300 more. Yeah. So um, I have Jackson's medium projection at 24 and three quarters. Uh, so that's, that's what we're looking for already in cash games and uh, anything else is, is really gravy. And I don't think that those Bengals linebackers are going to be able to stop him from running. Um, so I, I think if I was spending at quarterback, I, I would like Jackson just a little bit better than Watson. Um, and if I were punting, uh, John mentioned that he likes the Denver uh, and Las Vegas game. And I do too. I've got my eyes on that one. Um, if I'm, so th there's a lot of ways to build a, a roster this week, you know, in terms of lineup construction. Um, if I'm going all the way balanced at running back, so not playing Derrick Henry and playing a lot of these guys in the five to six K range that we're going to talk about and going a little bit heavier at wide receiver, uh, you need to save at quarterback and I like Drew Locke for the second straight week. And he did bust on me uh, last week. But there were, if you watch that game, uh, they kept stalling in the red zone. The receivers were dropping passes. Um, Jerry Judy dropped one right in the end zone that was like a, a backbreaker. He had a number of drops uh, in that game. But there were also some promising takeaways. They let Locke throw it 47 times in a, in a close back and forth game. Uh, they had some success on play action and boot action, and now they got the Raiders, and that's the 28th overall DVOA defense. So uh, I like Locke as a punt quarterback in cash. Uh, I think he's got some 
intriguing uh, cheap stacking partners and GPPs. So I would play him uh, in either format. I like how oh. Phil's trying to get all of his uh, digs on Devin and get his blood pressure as high as possible early in the show <laughs> to set up some fun later in the show. John, <laughs> tell me about the quarterbacks you like this week. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what's going on. It must be uh, 2021 karma or something, but these guys have, have pretty much <clears throat> they've taken all the quarterbacks I liked. Um, <clears throat> my favorite quarterback this week um, is, is probably Deshaun uh, Watson against Tennessee for all the reasons already laid out. Um, high scoring game, they're underdogs. And even when they run the ball, uh, as of late, they, they basically do it through passing. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I like Deshaun Watson quite a bit. Um, in all formats. Um, Matt Ryan was my, if you want to pay down a quarterback, that's the guy I like because you can't run against Tampa Bay. And uh, that's a, that's a game also that can shoot out. And my favorite GPP is Drew Locke. So, I mean, I think that the guys hit it. Um, you know, if I'm adding anybody to the list um, in, in GPPs, I, I do like um, Mike Glennon again this week against Indianapolis, um, kind of a punt option. Um, if you look at uh, the, the Jacksonville Jaguars wide receivers, we'll talk about wide receivers in a bit, but all of them come out um, under under owned. Um, and and I'm, not, I'm just going to pretend I didn't see uh, the karma get ruined already. I mean, <laughs> the guy is wearing camouflage, so I can just pretend I didn't see him. But, um, you know, for those of you who are listening on on the, the podcast, Phil just had a bad take and disagreed with me. But um, I love you know, the Glennon so call for what it's worth. Yeah, so go ahead and tell them why you love the Glennon call, Devin. Yeah, three, the Colts' secondary has absolutely fallen apart. Fallen apart. Uh, they've allowed 300 yards or more in four straight games, um, five of six, really. It's, uh, I mean, Drew Locke, he threw 47 times and had 260 yards. I, 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 you, can't be, you can't be poo-pooing on, on bad quarterback play there, buddy. <laughs> um, so, and in Locke is a fine GPP play. I can't do it in cash. His floor is... Is, is simply too low. If, if I had to go that low in cash, I would go Chase Daniel over Drew Locke at 4,900. He's going to be more of that 250, one or two touchdown guy. Locke's floor is like 140 yards and just abysmal games. But um, I'll throw one more GPP play out there. It's Kirk Cousins going up against this Detroit secondary that might be the worst in the league. Um, Cousins has sort of been up and down this year, but I think he has, he has some really good stacking partners no Dalvin Cook. So um, is Madison going to see the same workload that that Cook had? Maybe Madison and Boone do combined, but I don't I don't know that that's necessarily the case. They could go with the more pass heavy look this week. And it's a little bit pricey at 6,300, but um, I think he's a good play in GPPs this week. He often goes underlooked. Phil, give us another GPP guy you like. Three names I haven't heard yet that people may be wondering about are Tom Brady, Ryan Tannehill, and Aaron Rodgers. Any of those guys appeal to you, or do you have another guy in mind? Uh, yeah, those are all guys that will definitely be in my uh, tournament portfolio this week. I think um, my favorite of the ones that you mentioned is probably Tannehill. Um, mm -hmm. With uh, Kamara now off the slate, um, we're going to see Derrick Henry, I think, be the uh, the running back that people want to spend up to. And anytime uh, that's the case where Henry is going to be chalk, Tannehill uh, becomes the leverage play. Uh, Houston's pass defense is only marginally better than their horrible rush defense. Um, and uh, Tannehill, Tannehill is going to be the architect behind that 32 point uh, total that we should want to chase. Uh, and And you could stack him a number of ways, too. So. Uh, yeah, I think those are all pretty good calls, uh, Tannehill, Brady, and Rodgers. Uh, I'll throw out one more kind of vomit name that I like better than uh, Mike Glennon. Uh, Mike Glennon, guys, is incapable of scoring more than like 15 DraftKings points. So like it's fine if that's what you want, but at least Drew Locke is going to have a shot at 25 to 30. Mike Glennon has no shot, 0%. Um, so the guy that, that I would say if you want to get like really risky is Daniel Jones. Um, I think he projects pretty well uh, relative to his price. If you can't stomach Drew Locke and the, uh, the Dallas offense is clicking. Um, Jones is going to have to make plays to keep the giants in that one. And I could see, I could see that game going over the total. John, give us one more GPP play before we move on to running, running backs. 
You mean beyond Mike Lennon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I, the Mike Lennon, I'd feel much better if it was Gardner Minshew for what it's worth, but it's not. So um, I can't. Um, hey, I, if Cam Newton, and, and we were talking about this before the show, we're not really sure what's going on in the quarterback situation in New England. Um, you know, the line has moved as Austin's already talked about. Um, but there is a wide receiver who I'll talk about when we get to that section that I absolutely love for GPPs this week. And he plays for the New England Patriots. So I'm going, going to have some Cam Newton or Jarrett Stidham or whoever's starting um, to pair with him in stacks uh, because they're, they're both way cheap and uh, the wide receiver I like quite a bit. Nice. All right. Be sure to leave YouTube comments for us. We like to try to answer your questions as things evolve later in the week. We're recording this on Friday night, so things can change over the next day or two. And uh, be sure to check out these guys' articles over at footballguys.com slash DFS. Those get updated with their latest takes on how the news changes after we record this show. We're going to talk about running backs. Uh, Phil, I want to hear which running backs you like, but let me run down some of the guys we're missing this week. Uh, Alvin Kamara is out with a tested positive for COVID. Uh, Dalvin cook is out for personal reasons. Uh, we've got Gus Edwards got a limited practice on Friday. He may miss. Then the Rams are just banged up at pretty much every position. They are without Daryl Henderson. And then Cam Akers got a limited practice in on Friday, but he's still real iffy. Uh, Ronald Jones is likely to return this week after missing two games and Mike Davis is out for Carolina. There's a couple other guys, but those were the ones at the top Jets. of my list. What's that? The Jets. Gore and P. Ryan are also out. They are. If you're looking to get maybe some Ty Johnson uh, <laughs> performance yeah, in your buddy. DFS lineups. <laughs> I had it on my list, but I was like, uh, I didn't feel great about it. Okay, Phil, tell me about some running backs. Yeah, so the Camara injury is the one that really uh, kind of flipped the slate and and changed the entire complexion of how people are going to be building lineups this week. Uh, anytime Camara is out, you could pretty much pencil Latavius Murray in for 100 rushing yards, a touchdown, and four to six catches because Drew Brees is so good in the screen game. Uh, it's just one of the most straightforward plays of the season uh, versus Carolina, who has allowed ceiling games this season to Josh Jacobs. Todd Gurley, Ronald Jones, and Aaron Jones. Um, so I, I think that this is like borderline as obvious a play as that one uh, Mike Davis week, uh, yeah. the first week that he took over for um, for Christian McCaffrey. So I think you just plug him in as, as kind of a free square and, and you move on. Um, running back is loaded this week. Uh, there's a, a lot of right answers to, to this who you playing at running back question. Um, it, sticking with cash games, my, my next guy, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens now to his popularity because he's about the same price as Murray. Uh, and that was Melvin Gordon, uh, another guy who, uh, who let me down last week, but I think it was kind of an outlier. Uh, Philip Lindsay is on IR. Uh, Gordon played 70% of the snaps. Uh, he ran well about five yards per attempt, uh, but he didn't get in the end zone and he wasn't targeted in the passing game. And I think that he usually is good for, you know, like a non-zero, something like three or four targets. Uh, and he is their top option at the goal line. Um, Las Vegas is terrible against the run. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, we've seen Miles Gaskin and Jonathan Taylor approach the 35-point mark on DraftKings against them. Uh, so I could see a big game from Gordon. Um, and then uh, I'll just touch quickly on Derrick Henry and then throw it back to the guys and, and see if my last couple of GPP plays get mentioned. Um, but I, I think that Henry is a big decision for a lot of people on this slate. You've got the Houston run defense that's allowed uh, over 50% more PPR fantasy points to opposing running backs than the league average over the last five weeks. Um, Henry is 223 yards away from 2000 on the season. Uh, which is a heck of a milestone. And for a guy like him, that's certainly within reach. Um, and and it, it does seem as though the Titans should be in a spot where they have to play their starters the whole game. So he's a great play, but he's 9,400. This is DraftKings. He doesn't catch passes. And anytime that popularity is getting up there, it's a, a little bit scary. Um, but I don't really see a game script where he gets phased out. So I'm, I'm curious on, on what right now for me, he's a GPP play. 
Um, but I'm curious to see what the other guys are, are doing with Henry. John, what do you think about Henry and other running backs? I mean, I think your, your approach with Henry is really how, how are you going to build your lineups, right? Um, as you said, this position is actually really deep. Um, when we get to wide receiver, I don't know that it's nearly as deep for cash games as, uh, as running back is. I've got, I've got four guys written down, and none of them are named Derrick Henry that I like quite a bit for cash games at the running back position. Um, I, I don't hate it uh, in the sense that we, we know he's going to get close to 100 yards. We pretty much guarantee he's going to have a touchdown, at least on Sunday morning. Uh, if you look at player props, he's going to be the guy who has probably minus 275 to score a touchdown at the running back position, top of the list. Um, I just don't know that I'm going to spend 20% of my salary because there are guys like Latavius Murray, as you've already described at 5,600 MG three. I like a lot, um, for some, some of the reasons you've already mentioned at 5,700 and just above that, you can have, um, a guy going up against a worse running defense than Houston in the form of the lions with Alexander Madison, and you can get him at a $3,300 discount. Um, so it, it, it really, it, it depends on where you want to spend your money this week. And, and to be quite honest, I, there isn't a lot of place. There aren't a lot of places that I want to spend money this week. Uh, it's why Deshaun Watson is my favorite quarterback, because I feel like he's the most secure place to kind of lay, lay out some money. When we get to wide receiver, you know, you might make a case for Devontae Adams. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I want to do that. So, um, you know, Long-winded way of saying, and I, and, I, and I baked in a few picks there, uh, Derrick Henry's not on my cash game list. I think he's GPP viable for sure because he's demonstrated that all year. It's just that, I, that I'm building more of a kind of an even-keeled roster in terms of cash games this week with some of the guys I mentioned. And then the last one I think you have to give consideration to, um, we talked about at the top of this, of this segment, um, that being Malcolm Brown, um, especially if Cam Akers is inactive. I mean, you've got no Daryl Henderson. He's 4,300 going up against Arizona with a quarterback that I, we, we were asking each other before the show, who the heck is this guy? Because we don't know who he is. You know, all they're going to be doing is just dumping off to Malcolm Brown and saying, do your thing. Um, and at 4,300, we haven't seen that kind of value in some time um, on, on this site. So uh, I think there's a lot of ways to go uh, for cash games. Uh, and I don't think you need to go up to Derrick Henry uh, unless, unless you just have the salary. And that's a different story entirely. Um, but I will say for GPPs this week, I think I'm going pretty heavy on running back because there's so much value at this position at the flex position is what I wanted to say. So, um, as, you know, as you're filling those out, um, typically we're, we're pretty adamant about uh, going wide receiver because of the upside. Uh, I'm not so sure that's the right idea this week. Yeah, because there's a lot of lower price guys that could completely blow up and that creates some opportunity. Uh, Devin, talk to us about running backs. Yeah, so I, I'm not going to touch too much on cash game guys just because the guys have nailed it. I'll, I'll go Madison. I'll throw out um, <clears throat> Madison, Murray. And then if you want to go Henry, uh, fine. I don't love him in GPPs. I, 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 I think he's going to get incredibly popular. I think he's looking 25 plus percent when, it, when it's all said and done. People are going to want that safety net. So he's a guy that I would potentially be fading there. Um if I look at running back in a GPP setting, I'm sort of looking at these weird scenarios and, and, and it's like Ty Johnson and Daryl Williams are either of these guys viable because like we saw Ty Johnson when Gore was out, he had 19 carries over a hundred yards. The matchup's good against new England. He's going to be under rostered. I, I can make a case that he's, he's going to be underlooked because people are still thinking that the Jets, I mean, the Jets are still fighting and, and that's, that's what I want to look for in a team this year or this week is a team that still cares, a team that's going out there and still trying. And, and that's certainly the Jets. Um, Ty Johnson, they're trying, this is what they're trying to, they're trying to spite themselves, but well, they've yes, already locked in the second. They're, they're trying. So once they won one game, it didn't really matter if they won three yeah. and um, Ty Johnson, this is his opportunity. This is his Super Bowl. So, I mean, realistically, if he's going to have a, a career or, a, you know, I, I don't know his rookie or his contract status, but if, he, if he's going to have a long-term career, people are going to look at this one game and say, look, this guy can do it. Um, Kansas City, do we just think there's nothing there? Like, I don't know. I, 
Bell is how... probably isn't going to play. It doesn't seem like. Um, he layers out. Maybe it's a good question. You got to ask yourself is whether or not Chad Henney can sustain an NFL drive after after not taking uh, you know a snap since like 2014. <laughs> I mean, I think Austin was still in college uh, back then. <laughs> I, I don't know, but um, if you if you think that if you think that Chad Henney can lead the offense then Daryl Williams is absolutely in play because he, nobody's going to play him. Um, right. I think they're going to be looking for guys like me, Cole Hardman, um, who we'll talk about in a moment uh, being kind of chalky. Uh, nobody's going to talk about him. So he's a good GPP play from that end. It's just a question whether or not uh, Chad Henney can sustain a drive long enough to, uh, to get them into the red zone. And then, and then the only thing I'll call out regarding Malcolm Brown is, is if Cam Akers plays, he's off the board for me. I, I think that if Cam Akers plays, it's at, at yeah. best 50-50 split. So I just Agreed. wanted to throw that out there. It, it's, um, and then I think that's it. Phil, oh, did you want to talk about right. Daria Ogumboale, John? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, Are you afraid I'll talk, to pronounce his name? I, I'm, I'm certainly not going to pronounce his name. But uh, Dare, uh, who plays for the Jacksonville Jaguars, should have the backfield largely to himself. Uh, this week after demonstrating a, a pretty nice game last week against Chicago, he had 14 touch or 14 carries for a, a hair over 70 yards and had a couple receptions thrown in. And uh, this week they go up against Indianapolis, which, you know, would argue that, you know, they're not going to have a lot of um, running opportunity, but when they get inside the red zone, this is going to be the guy they look to. Uh, and, and he did catch the ball fairly well out of the, out of the backfield last week. And, um, very, very little uh, competition. He's going to be um, on too few rosters in terms of, I'm looking at my model right now, um, in terms of projections as of Friday night. So we're a bit later this week than we typically are when we record. Uh, he's the, the, the number two guy, the number two guy most likely to achieve the GPP value on his salary. Um, and um, I've got him somewhere between five to 8% um, on percent rostered numbers. So uh, he's, he's a really good GPP play this week at 4,500 when we're talking about some of the other guys ahead of him. Phil, give me another GPP play. Yeah, uh, real quick, I wanted to chime in on the Kansas City situation. It, it seemed to me last week that Williams was like the more important of the two uh, to the team than Le'Veon Bell. And with CEH hurt and, um, and Bell hurt, I wonder if they're going to treat Williams even with, with kid gloves to make sure that they have someone viable for when they get to the playoffs. And um, I don't know, maybe we see more Darwin Thompson uh, that blast from the past name uh, mm -hmm. than, uh, than anybody expects. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, yeah. It's a long way of saying, I, I don't know that I'm going there. Um, you can make the other argument in just one second. You can make the other argument that they need him to get reps. If they think he's, he's talented, he only has 39 carries on the, on the year. If they're going to use him in the playoffs, it can go both sides. Is what I'm yeah, saying. Fair, I see fair your enough. Um, yeah, the the guy that I wanted to call out was Nick Chubb. I think that you could get really good leverage with him because the crowd is either going to spend up to Derrick Henry or they're going to balance the running back position with some of the guys that we talked about. Uh, and then if they do target a running back in that, you know, seventy five hundred dollar range, it's going to be Jonathan Taylor. So I think that Nick Chubb is is going to end up on fewer than 10% of rosters to be sure. Uh, the Browns need a win. I don't think they trust Baker Mayfield to deliver it. Uh, I think they're going to kind of stick with the, uh, the lady who brought him to the dance and that's the running game. Uh, and Pittsburgh's playing their second string. Uh, so, you know, as much as Kareem Hunt and his usage is a bother, uh, Chubb has shown us that he could clear a hundred yards and score more than once uh, in a 60, 40 lead in a committee uh, and then real quick, I'll just slip Kenyon Drake in there. Uh, I think we have to keep an eye on Chase Edmonds. Uh, Edmonds it, did not practice as of Thursday. I did not see a report on whether he made it back today. I don't uh, think he practiced Friday. I had trouble finding it as well, but it sounded like he didn't practice Friday either. All right. You know, if he's out and, and you could assign his usual four or five catches to Drake, uh, that is a scenario that I'm likely to chase because it's, it's still hard to run on the Rams, but it's uh, it's easier than trying to pass on them. Um, so Drake has that goal line role. If he was catching passes, uh, I'd be super interested. John, any other GPP guys you want to mention before we move on to receivers? 
Uh, real quick, uh, confirming Chase Edmonds did not practice today. Um, right on. As of Twitter an hour ago. Uh, other guys, uh, I think Zeke Elliott, uh, Cowboys are chasing a, a playoff position. And uh, he had 100 yards last week. Uh, the offense is starting to look a little bit better. And, um, you know, I looked at the early projections in terms of uh, percent roster for him. I thought it was a bit low, I mean, 5% or thereabouts um, for a guy that uh, of his talents, um, you know, one of the, if you don't know anything about uh, DFS, you know, take uh, elite talents when people weren't paying attention to them. Um, I'm actually surprised uh, that uh, speaking of elite talent that um, uh, Phil didn't talk about DeAndre Swift. It's typically one of, mm. uh, it's a move that I, that I expected him to talk about earlier, but DeAndre Swift, uh, you know, it, it looks like um, Matthew Stafford's likely not going to play this weekend. And uh, they're obviously missing Kenny Galladay. They're just going to give it to DeAndre Swift and say, do what you can against uh, Minnesota. And, and, and he's a guy that, that might just be able to do that at, at 6,300 um, because he, he's got really good talent. And I think he's got a special future in the NFL. So um, he's a guy that I also like. And then the last one, um, I'm surprised nobody mentioned this guy either. This it tells you how deep the position is this week. Right. But Rodney Smith, Carolina, he's uh, the minimum at, at four thousand, going up against pretty tough defense in in New Orleans. But he should get all the looks because uh, CMC is not going to play, and um, and uh, oh, I can't. Oh, and Mike and Mike Davis isn't playing. Thank you. Mike Any Davis concerns isn't. about Curtis Samuel though? I mean, he could get some run out of the backfield, right? Curtis Samuel get he'll get he'll get a couple carries, no doubt. But I think uh, you know Rodney Swift is. Or, Swift, Jesus, John, Ronnie Smith. Uh, Can you pronounce a good Wale for us? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't just say Rodney Smith. Um, Rodney Smith, Smith is a tough guy. name to say. They're going to get. He's going to get his fair share, um, and people are going to overlook him because he's kind of a no-name guy in Week 17. They're going to think he's ancillary, but um, if he ends up with 15 touches, I think there's a pretty good chance that he. Uh, relative to the field can hit uh, GPP value. All of which is to say, this is a great position this week. Um, and that's why we spent a lot of time on it. We can go to wide receivers now and spend no time at all because I don't like it. <laughs> Let me recap real quick because I forgot to recap the cash plays on quarterback. We've got uh, Deshaun Watson seems like the top cash game pick for both Devin and John, whereas Phil is going to pay a little extra and get to Lamar Jackson. Those are the cash game plays for quarterbacks. And then at running back, it sounds like everybody likes Latavius Murray. Uh, it sounds like both John and Devin are on Alexander Madison. Uh, Phil is maybe going to try to find a way to get Derrick Henry into his lineup if he's got the cash. And it sounds like both John and Phil like Melvin Gordon. Any Malcolm other cash Brown game plays? Cam, Malcolm Brown of Cam Akers is out. Yes. And uh, I'll throw Ty Johnson as a fringe guy. Okay. I like it. I like it. All right. Uh, please uh, hit subscribe, hit that bell, give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and listening. We're going to wide receivers. The guys I have on my list here are Cooper Cup is out. Brandon Ayuk is out. And Jarvis Landry should be back. Tyler Boyd should be back. And the Dolphins receivers are a little iffy this week. Both Devontae Parker and Jakeem Grant got limited practice in on Thursday and Friday, but they're still questionable. Uh, DJ Shark is out and there's a few others. That's kind of my list. Let's go to John first for receivers because he hates it so much. Tell us who are you playing at receiver? I don't like a lot here. Uh, you know, you, I, I mean, I think you can, you can go up to Devonte Adams. He's, he's kind of like the uh, Dalvin cook or, or Derek Henry of the, of the position certainly in play every week. It's just a matter of the opportunity cost and what it means um, to where you're going elsewhere. He's 9,200 this week. Uh, he's largely matchup proof going up against uh, Chicago. No issues with that. Um, I'm not doing it myself. Um, I'm, I'm actually going uh, mid-tier to low in terms of cash game builds this week at wide receiver. I think um, Tyler Lockett's a guy that, that um, I want a piece of um, going up against San Francisco, running out of the slot. He's, uh, he's going to avoid um, uh, Richard Sherman. And um, I, I just, I, I think that he's a decent play this week. Uh, I don't know what Jamison Crowder needs to do to, to get his salary up on a PPR site like uh, DraftKings, but uh, he's, he never goes above 5K. And this week he's at that kind of max level. Um, last week I was high on him and he delivered. And I think the week before he did pretty well. 
um, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, pulling that up quickly. Um, yeah, last week, seven catches, 92 yards. Uh, the week prior, he had, he had uh, six catches for 70 yards, and, and he just continues to do what he's always done with Sam Darnold under center. And then after that, it's, it's basically punt plays. I think Nicole Hardman is interesting against the Chargers. LaVisca Chenault, we just talked about uh, DJ Chark being out last week. He got into the end zone. Um, he looks like a decent play at 4,200. And then um, if you're going, if you need a punt play, let's say you are running out Devontae Adams and you need somebody to kind of counter that $9,200 salary. Uh, Josh Reynolds makes sense at 3,200. Uh, going up against Arizona, you, you can probably suspect. Uh, actually, I'm not so sure about this. What do you guys think? Is you think um, with with Cooper Cup being out, will they slide uh, Robert Woods into the slot and then put Van Jefferson and um, and Josh Reynolds on the perimeter, or do you think that that um, he'll stay on the outside? Question because, is with John Walford, do we care? Right. Yeah. Well, you're gonna want you're gonna want somebody with uh, a low A dot, and then you know, so that's gonna get rid of Van Jefferson. I think it's Certainly, Robert Woods. It probably is Robert Woods, and you, but you're going to pay double the price for him. I'm staying um, away from that scenario altogether. The Rams yeah, seem like I mean, a hot mess. Look, I, I, I told you I don't like this position, but those are the guys on my list in terms of cash games. Can I you do, expand I, on Tyler Lockett a little bit? Because I'm struggling with that in cash. I mean, he's he's super cheap at, at 5,800. I know he hasn't done much of late, um, but you got to think about, you know, the, the implied team total here is 26 points against San Francisco at San Francisco. Uh, DK Metcalf is going to be contending with, with uh, Richard Sherman on the perimeter. And, and that's really where it's coming from. I mean, I, I, DK Metcalf is pretty close to, to matchup proof. I'll at least grant you that if that's what you're going to make, because I'm certainly, he had a great, a great game against them earlier this year. Um, but, you know, Lockett's is just a guy that, that I think is better than he has been performing of late. Yeah, I think he's a fine GPP play. I just don't know if I can get there in cash. But Who are your cash game plays, Doug? Yeah, I, I think if you can afford him, Devontae Adams makes a ton of sense. I, I don't know where John's spending his money this week. Um, <laughs> he's saving so, it all. He's saving yeah, it for the wild card weekend. Saving it for uh, 2021. Um, <laughs> but it, it, not going Derrick Henry, I, I, I think you definitely have the money to go with Devontae Adams, especially with no Travis Kelsey this week. But um, – the, another guy that I like a lot this week is Justin Jefferson going up against Detroit. I, I talked a little bit about Kirk Cousins earlier this, this week. And, and look, uh, Jefferson is still motivated. He still has an outside chance at offensive rookie of the year. He's probably not going to win it, even though he should. Um, that, that award will go to Justin Herbert. Um, but you look, at, you look at Jefferson at 7,700, and if you don't like Devontae Adams, all the guys had over the last five weeks is 10, 11, 8, 12, and 13 targets. So he's getting the targets. He's getting the workload. The touchdowns have been a little inconsistent. They, that's the biggest issue. Um, if he was getting consistent looks in the red zone, I mean, he's probably in that night Calvin Ridley type, type range. Um, but I, I think that he's in a really good spot against um, Detroit. Detroit is an absolute dumpster fire. They're just trying to get to the end of the season. Um, and he's had some difficult matchups the last two weeks against New Orleans and Chicago, and he's averaging over 90 yards against those teams. So if you're not going Adams and you want to, sp you have a way to spend up, it's likely um, Jefferson for me. Going down the list a little bit, I like A.J. Brown as a GPP play going up against Houston. We talked about Ryan Tannehill and we talked about Houston's secondary in general, um, just being an absolute mess this year. Uh, let's see. They, they're allowing 274 passing yards per, per game. AJ Brown has sort of reestablished himself as the number one guy in Tennessee. I like the just, or I like the Jamison Crowder pick. Um, and then I don't know. I, I don't know why this name just keeps popping up, but Marvin Jones against Minnesota. Um, if you don't believe in DeAndre Swift, I, I'm sort of iffy on him. I mean, he, he was sort of in that 12 to 15 carry range for most of the season. Do we think he's going to have a big workload in week 17? I, I can see both sides of the argument there. 
Um, Marvin Jones is a pretty good GPP play or even a, a, mid, a third cash game ga- guy if you had to do it. Um, <clears throat> so for me, I'm looking, I actually like quite a bit at this position this week. <laughs> um, but I, but I like some ex- more expensive guys. I like Adams. I like Jefferson. I like, um, Brown as a GPP play. And then I like Crowder going down pretty low too. Phil, uh, do you like some of these guys? You got get different guys on your list. Uh, I do. Uh, Adams for sure. You know, I, I, he's, he's pretty much the reason why I'd be less likely to roster Derrick Henry in a cash game because I would rather uh, have Devontae Adams. Uh, just some, some quick notes on the guys that have been mentioned uh, in support of Jefferson. I think he's about 110 yards away from the rookie receiving record that Anguan uh, Bolden currently holds. Um, so I would think that they would go out and try to get him into the record books. Uh, so he's got that going for him. Um, as far as Lockett, John, I don't know if this changes your take, but I'm reading that Richard Sherman is going to scratch this week. So he's going to be out for whatever that's worth. Um, you know, uh, it certainly that doesn't might. make things, yeah, that might. It, it doesn't make things worse for, uh, for Lockett, but you know, targets it might have, though, right. It yeah, might, it, might. Tar- it definitely makes things worse. I would think. Yeah. Yeah, tar- targets won't be funneling uh, to to lock it at the very least. But um, I like Calvin Ridley. You know, he's like a, a small step down from Devontae Adams. He's over 100 yards in each of his last four games. Uh, he's got coin flip odds of scoring a touchdown, and multiple touchdowns are always in the range of outcomes. Um, you know, if we're so eager to play Matt Ryan every week, then uh, then Ridley has to be the reason why. Um, and, at, at, you know, Devin mentioned teams that are still uh, trying, even though they're out of it. And I think Atlanta showed us last week with the way they fought Kansas City uh, that they're not looking to, like, gift a division rival the, the playoff seed that they want. So, um, you know, again, Tampa Bay's defense is a pass funnel. Ridley's one of the best wide receivers in the game this year. Um, I, I would actually – I wouldn't mind getting both him and Adams into my cash game lineup – and it's very popular. Uh, it's very possible this week with the way that the running back price is. Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're going to have to go Johnson and Malcolm Brown. Well, I guess if you went down a quarterback, you probably could. Do yeah. If, if, if you could stomach drew lock or another one of those cheap quarterbacks, you could do it without uh, Ty Johnson. Um, the, you, you're not going to be able to spend on a wide receiver three. If you're playing those two guys though. And uh, a punt that I like is Richie James uh, in San Francisco for 3,100. Uh, We mentioned no Brandon Ayuk. Debo Samuel has been out. Uh, George Kittle is back to command attention underneath and down the seam. And that's going to leave James kind of free to roam. And he's like a quick bursty little dude. He's kind of like a a Ted Ginn. And um, we we saw him star when he was given an opportunity back in week nine. Uh, He had 36 DraftKings points. So um, I I could definitely see Richie James, uh, killing a $3,100 salary. I would, right. As of right now, he's in my cash game, uh, shell. And then in GPPs, uh, I do like Corey Davis. Um, you know, he put up a bagel last week, which was disappointing, but I think we could throw that result out. Uh, it was snowing in green Bay and, uh, Tennessee's offense never really got off the ground. They got blown out. Uh, he's another one, uh, 55 yards short of his first 1,000 yard season, uh, and he's in a contract year. So, assuming he has a, a good enough relationship with Ryan Tannehill, uh, I think that uh, that they'll want to get him over that mark. Uh, and then T.Y. Hilton, 5,800. He's cooled down a little bit. Uh, he was white hot a couple of weeks ago for a three week stretch, but uh, he hasn't disappeared the way that he did for most of the year uh, over the last couple of games. The target volume is steady and. Um, I don't know. Does anybody have uh, news on Michael Pittman? I know that uh, he was in the concussion protocol, didn't practice as of Thursday. Uh, So if he's out, that should pad uh, Hilton and Zach Pascal's uh, target numbers. And, um, you know, questionable. Questionable. Okay. Um, So that, that would give him a little boost, but I think he's playable regardless Uh, just because everybody is uh, you know, they look at this 32 point total, for Indianapolis and, and they're going to chase it with Jonathan Taylor, I, I would think um, rather than the passing game. Uh, Pascal's a, a decent play too at 4,300. He's been uh, playing pretty well. And then the last one I like is uh, Jerry Judy. 
they kind of force fed him after he was vocal uh, about his role in the passing game. He had 15 targets last week uh, and he proceeded to um, show that he is not worthy of those targets, uh, but he was, <laughs> he, he was the number one pick, you know, for, for Denver. And I, I think they're really trying to go into the off season with something to hang their hats on in terms of the, uh, the future of this offense with Locke and, and Judy um, and, and I think Judy will be eager to, to bounce back and, and make good on basically losing them the, the game last week. Uh, I think Pittman will probably go this week. He got in a full practice Thursday and Friday, yeah. even though Devin is he right. did. He's okay. technically listed as questionable uh, still. Uh, I don't know what the status is for, for concussion protocol for him. Uh, so, John. Can I ask a question yeah. just real quick? Yep. Any love for Cincinnati this week? So Brandon Allen looked good last week. He looked like a first quarterback that they've had since Burrow was out. That was decent. It was against T. Higgins Houston. at yeah. what? It was against Houston. It was, but T Higgins, what's his price? 5,000. Yeah. I don't mind Higgins because 6, he's just, Higgins is just Tyler, good. Tyler Boyd's back this week. And I, I think the bigger thing is the, the Ravens last week, if you had asked me this question last week, I'd have been all for it, but the Ravens are actually healthy in their secondary now. Jimmy Smith is back. Marlon Humphrey um, is there. And then um, on the other side, uh, former Kansas City Chief. Of course, I can't remember names. You guys know who I am. Um, there are other cornerback who's actually a pretty – Mark Peters. Peters, Peters yeah. is actually – he's healthy again too. So, I mean, their, their secondary is back to full strength. I, they still uh, – were, were, were they back last week or no? Last week they were, they were down Peters and Jimmy Smith and Humphrey got hurt at yeah. halftime, but – He's practicing again. So I think I just think Higgins strength. at 5,000 is too, his price should be 58, 5,900. Yeah. Okay. He, I mean, for, for what it's worth, he's pretty highly rated in my, in my model this week, but I, I just don't know if I can get behind it. It feels like a trap. It feels like a trap. Hey, uh, before we move on to tight ends, a couple yeah. guys I wanted to mention, uh, love the Calvin Ridley call the guy when, when Julio Jones isn't playing, he just blows it up and he'll continue to be, um, on my list of, of players to play in GPPs uh, indefinitely. Um, Jerry Judy was also on my list. I think you can go the opposite the way with uh, Patrick, though. Um, if, if Judy gets to be pretty popular, I think Patrick is still a pretty good play at 4,000. Uh, this guy is, he's six foot five, and um, he's going to be lining up across from somebody who is uh, just about six feet. So they get inside the red zone. He's going to be a guy they'll be looking to, um, you know, in, in leverage situations. Uh, and he should be on a lower number of rosters. Uh, the, the guy that I think I like the most this week, and this, this is going off, but it's week 17, so why not try? Um, Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers has been through a gauntlet of tough, uh, of tough coverage over the past, since Thanksgiving or thereabouts. Let me pull it up really quickly, because I was looking at this earlier when we was doing some of the pre, pre-reads for the show. Uh, last week, last week he contended with um, Tredavious White. The week before, Xavier and Howard. And, and by the way, that week he went seven for 111. Um, the week before that, Jalen Ramsey. The week before that, uh, Casey Hayward. The week before that, Patrick Peterson. This guy has dealt with the best of the best in the NFL for the past five to six weeks. I mean, he, even in that play, you go back one week before that, it was the Baltimore Ravens who we just talked about. This week he gets the Jets. And nobody's going to be on him. Um, and remember, earlier this season, we were talking about J- uh, uh, Jacoby Myers like he was a household name. And um, he, he's a guy that, that continues to be liked by, by Cam Newton. If you look at his targets, if Cam's throwing the ball, which he doesn't do often, but when he's throwing it, he's looking at Jacoby Myers. I think he's a super sharp play this week. Nobody's going to be on him, probably 3% or thereabouts. Um, I'm going to have quite a bit of it. Nice. I think that's a good breakdown. Um, let's talk about recapping our cash plays here a little bit. It sounds like Phil is going to try to pay up at this position and try to find a way to get Devonta Adams and Calvin Ridley together. And maybe one way he's doing that is with Richie James. And then Devin maybe is trying to pay up for Adams and Jefferson, perhaps. Was there another cash game play there, Crowder. Devin? Crowder. Crowder. Okay. And then John, your cash game plays I had were Crowder and lock it maybe although you're maybe changing that if with the sherman news and then potentially chenault in cash 
Chanel Reynolds, I think you can go Adams too. I mean, there, there's a lot of ways to go. It depends on what the final build looks like. But I, but I think what the guys said, um, I don't disagree with much of what they said. Yep, that sounds good. Now let's talk about some tight ends. I have no tight end injuries on my list to discuss. Devin, I'm going to kick you off with some tight ends. Who are you playing? Uh, I'm going to let someone else talk about Austin Hooper. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> In fairness, uh, all of Cleveland I know, everything was changed. That's I'm not going to, I'm not going to take the W for that one. Um, but I think Austin Hooper is in a good spot again this week. Uh, Harrison Bryan is out. Um, so they are limited. Um, David and Joku is just not a thing. It's not going to be a thing. Um, and if you think about Pittsburgh, you, you think about pass rush and even though there's no TJ Watt, no Cameron Hayward, they're still going to blitz. I mean, they they still lead the league in, in sacks and, and what does Baker Mayfield not do play well under pressure. So I, I think there's going to be a potential that there's a, a lot of dump downs off to Hooper. He's still cheap at 3,800 um, more of a GPP play this week than a cash game play, just because I think that Landry and Higgins and those other guys will be back. And then the running game, um, the cash game, play I, I would love to go with is, is Darren Waller, but I, I'm not going to be able to afford that. So um, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Eric Eber, or Eric Evan Ingram. I'm turning into John and just mispr- yeah. mispronouncing things. Uh, Evan Ingram at 3,700, I think is in a really good spot this week against, against Dallas. Daniel Jones is back. Um, and John was right last week to, hyping him up. So I'll give him props there. 3,700, his price should be about 45 ish. It shouldn't be 37. So I, I would take advantage of, of that one. Uh, I think he gets, you know, five for 50 and with the chance for a touchdown. So that that's good enough for me. Uh, and then one, one last thing for GPPs is George Kittle at 6,000. So we talked about no brain and Iuk mentioning guys like Richie James like that tells you the state of state of the uh 49ers and, and you know look he he largely disappointed last week he wasn't on the main slate so that that's good but you you think about guys who can he get does he have the most upside of any quarterback on this slate I think he or, or quarterback I can't talk right now uh, tight ends of this slate. I think he does. So I, I think he's in, incredibly intriguing. Phil, who's your top cash game play? It's George Kittle. Um, I, I don't think he disappointed last week. He had 92 yards on, uh, on half the snaps and he looked good doing it to me. Um, I, I think that, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I think that they're going to trust him, uh, for a little bit more work this week. And like Devin just said, uh, his ceiling is there with Waller uh, for, for the, the best tight end in, in the league. 6,000. I mean, it's up a thousand from last week, but he's still kind of priced as, as if he's hurt. And I don't know if he's going to play on, on three quarters of the snaps and there's no Brandon Ayuk. Uh, I, I like it in cash. I, I have him in my lineup now. Uh, the other one that I liked, if I'm paying down a little is Noah Fant. Um He's a guy that's on Kittle and Waller's level, at least from an athletic talent standpoint. And he's been targeted 27 times over the last three games, uh, but his price refuses to budge. Uh, So I think the floor with him is a lot higher than people think uh, because of that target volume. And the ceiling is super high because he's one of the best yards after the catch tight ends in the game. Uh, And then in GPPs, I will take some shots on Mike Gusecki. Um, he is, you mentioned in the wide receiver section that uh, both of Miami's wide receivers are iffy uh, in Parker and Grant. And Gusecki is really the only uh, pass catcher on that team that, that Tua has a, a good connection with anyway. Uh, he's also an athletic freak like Kittle and Fant and Waller and all those guys. And he's got uh, over 23 points in two out of his last three games. Uh, 4,200 seems like a, a good, a good price there in a must win situation. Uh, so yeah, those are, those are the three guys I like best and Waller. I just, I can't really get to him in a, uh, in a cash lineup though. So just so I'm clear, Drew Locke, Melvin Gordon, Jerry, Judy, and Noah Fant in cash. That's uh, what you're no, he's got Kittle and Fant. He's got Kittle in cash. Yeah. K- Kittle's Kittle's in my cash lineup. I think that Fant is cash viable 
Uh, Judy for me was a GPP play. I do think that you could do Gordon and Locke in the same cash lineup. Um, Just because they're so cheap. Yeah, because they're so cheap. So I'm not too worried about the the potential negative correlation there. John, who's your cash tight end? Uh, They've both been mentioned. Um, George Kittle is there. Uh, Last week he played 50% of the snaps in his first game back. Got to think that goes up this week. Um, C.J. Beathard barely threw the ball last week, only 22 times. But uh, College he, roommates. Yeah, they're, they're college roommates. I haven't heard that before. So um, build that into your, into your strategy. Um, <clears throat> no, he had, he had uh, 22 pass attempts, and, um, and Kittle had five of those targets. So basically a 25% market share um, on a week where uh, Ayuk was actually playing. And this week he's not playing. You got to think that goes up with the snap count going up 6,000. I think I can get there because of the way um, throughout the show I've been describing uh, kind of my cash game build. Um, if you're not uh, Evan Ingram, as, as uh, Devin's already mentioned, he continues to be too cheap. Dallas has not played well against him. Um, and, uh, you know, last week I, he, he ended up doing exactly what I thought he was going to do. Either of those guys are in play for GPPs. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of, of uh, exposure to Derrick Henry on, on the Tennessee Titans. Um, and if you're going Tannehill, you're likely going with somebody like A.J. Brown. I've already heard Corey Davis. Nobody's mentioned Johnny Smith. Johnny Smith's 3,800. Uh, this is a guy who's already demonstrated this year. I think uh, on more than one occasion, he has two touchdown upside. Um, and uh, nobody's looking at him, at least in, in what I've seen across the industry uh, to this point in the week. And then um, Dalton Schultz for the Cowboys going up against the Giants. He's 3,000. Uh, uh, Andy Dalton seems to be growing a, a bit of a rapport with Dalton Schultz. I'm a Cowboys fan. Um, don't hold that against me. But, uh, you know, I watch these games and you can kind of see them kind of just they're starting to, to vibe a bit as the season winds to an end. And um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Dalton Schultz get into the end zone against the Giants this week. Uh, at three thousand dollars, that's what he's got to do to reach GPP value, and he's going to do so on less than five percent of rosters. So, um, I'll have him as part of my my larger portfolio. So to recap, we've got uh, Devin likes Evan Ingram in cash. The other two guys like George Kittle, and uh, let's catch up on some time by covering defenses. Devin, is it just set Cleveland in cash and move on? Miles Garrett gets three sacks, ties T.J. Watt for the sack lead. Does he yep. keep his helmet on this year, though? <laughs> <laughs> It, it depends what Mason Rudolph tells him. <laughs> oh, man. John, you agree with the Cleveland take? Yes, yes. Phil, Absolutely. what do you think? Cleveland. Is there any GPP defenses worth mentioning here, uh, Devin? Whoever's facing this John Walford guy. <laughs> <laughs> that would be uh, Arizona, right? Yeah. Yep, Arizona. Yep, I like it. I would just pick on the bad, bad quarterbacks. Pick yeah. on the scenarios that these quarterbacks are – just going to be atrocious and, and there's several yeah. of them on this slate yeah indy has got a jacksonville quarterback you've got uh the chargers facing you know the kansas Ch- city quarterback facing the chiefs yeah i mean yeah chargers are one of my top plays this week at 2800 for gpps the guy hasn't played in the nfl in six years and he may be out there trying to pretend he's pat mahomes and may end up not looking like pat mahomes yeah all right, let's go to stacks. We'll want to spend a little more time there. Uh, let's go to Phil first for stacks. Who are you stacking this week? Yeah, so this uh, uh, should come as no surprise if uh, you've been listening the entire time, but I like Drew Locke with Jerry Judy and Noah Fant. Uh, super cheap for the three of them. Uh, and then I would run it back with Josh Jacobs on the other side for Las Vegas. And I'm also going to be doing it the other way. Uh, I think you could do Derek Carr, Nelson Aguilar, Darren Waller, and then run it back with Melvin Gordon. Uh, So (laughs) in case you have... uh, (laughs) Kevin hates all these picks. That's fine, (laughs) Phil. You just keep... I haven't heard them before, and it's week 17, so let's have some fun. (laughs) Yeah, that game is going over is my point. Uh, And then within my lineups... Um, I like the idea of creating a little push pull with Latavius Murray uh, and a Panthers receiver on the other side. Uh, So kind of like as a secondary stack, um, you know, if I'm playing Murray, I'm going to have a lot of DJ Moore, uh, maybe Robbie Anderson uh, or Curtis Samuel in that same lineup. 
Got it. Like it. John Stacks. Yeah, let me build on that for a second, because that's something I've been doing a lot more of my, you know, I think most people are aware I play MME, mass multi-entry, 150 lineups. Um, and I know that, that some of us, uh, Phil's been getting into it more and more, more recently. One of the things you want to do there from a strategic point of view is, is building correlations. We always talk about stacks, but what Phil just pointed out is, is building in a quote secondary stack, right? Where, um, and, and I'll, I'll give you a stack, for example. Um, uh, I have uh, Deshaun Watkins, Jordan Aikens uh, at tight end. I'm going to go down with that ship in, in two. Deshaun Watson. Deshaun, Deshaun Watson and, and who? What did I say? Well, Watch, Watkins. Watkins. Of course. Right. Deshaun Watson, uh, Jordan Aikens. That's where it came from. I was yep. bringing them together. <laughs> yep. Jordan Aikens, Derrick Henry. And then, so you've got that game stack, and then you roll in the, the next secondary stack that he just described with. Uh, a Latavius Murray and a Carolina Panthers receiver. So what you're doing mm. is on a, on a, on a roster of nine players, you've now got five of them completely correlated. So you only need those two games to hit. And then the remainder of your roster really, you know, it, it's a lot less, or it's a lot more likely to hit um, in terms of bringing those correlations together. So um, I think it's, it's really astute of Phil to bring that up. And I just wanted to kind of drive that home because it, that's, that's a way that I that I certainly build out my mass multi entry. All right, uh, uh, Matt Ryan to pick your favorite receiver there. Um, Russell Gage is, is on my list as being a sharp play. We didn't talk about him. Calvin Ridley certainly is going to be um, in play without Julio Jones on the field, and you can run that back with. I mean, I have uh, Antonio Brown here, but I think you can you can make a case for Chris Godwin or even Mike Evans the way he's been playing of late. And then um, the last one, and we, we've kind of talked about this one. I love Jacoby Myers, so I'm going to pair him with, with Cam Newton or whoever is actually starting a quarterback for, for uh, New England and then running that back on the other side with a guy I think we all liked, and that's Jamison Crowder. Devin, who are you stacking? Viking stack. So Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson. Um, and then the other stack I'll go with is – Deshaun Watson and not Jordan Akins, but any receiver outside of Jordan Akins. Yeah, Cooks or <laughs> Cootie. <laughs> uh, it's probably Cooks. Yeah. I, th I think Cootie had his moment. I, I think that he's um, just not consistent enough. He's too small. He's more of a slot guy. I, I, I trust Cooks a little bit more. Nice. All right, fellas, we've made it through the stacks. This is our last official episode of this season. Uh, the, you know, the thank you viewers and listeners for convincing us to do a week 17 episode. We haven't done one of those in a couple of years. Uh, any parting thoughts from you guys? Uh, I will go to uh, Phil first. Uh, tell me any, any parting thoughts you have for our audience here. Yeah, just want to uh, thank the three of you for, uh, for showing the faith in me and bringing me on board this year. Uh, I've had a, a lot of fun. Um, I, I think I've gotten a little bit better as the year has gone along and, and gotten some reps under my belt. Uh, so that's good. And, and of course, the, uh, the viewers and the listeners, uh, the reception has been mostly warm in the uh, YouTube comment section. Uh, and, and for that, I am grateful. Uh, it's been a pleasure to serve. I hope I helped um, or at least made you uh, think about things a little bit differently. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to coming back on board next year if they'll have me. Definitely. John, uh, what party thoughts? I don't have a whole lot to say. Um, I, you know, I let, I let these other guys talk uh, more than me. Um, I don't know. I look, I, I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's a new year. It's 2021. I think it was a tough year for, uh, many, if not all of us. And, and I'm really looking forward to just, um, seeing what 2021 holds and, you know, fortunately we get one week of, of NFL football or at least regular season football to kind of see whether or not anything changes with, with regards to DFS, but I, but I'm more looking forward to just what the year holds. Um, so um, before I get too sappy, I'll, I'll hand it over to Devin um, because that really, I'm, I'm just looking forward to uh, a new year. Devin, what do you think, man? I'd like to thank my bankroll for all those that played Jonathan Taylor uh, early on in the season, every <laughs> single week. <laughs> no, um, in all seriousness, I, this show has always been about fun. And, and I think that that's, you know, largely what I, what I think of when I describe this show and it's, it's really the engagement with the, the commenters or people on Twitter and, and just interactions. And that's what we try to bring. So, um, 
you know, I, I, I think it, we've hit that a lot and hopefully we've been entertaining in a, in a nice weekly listen in a, in a very weird year. So um, we may have something next week. Um, there may be a Q and a type thing that, that we do for the, or I say I do for the wild card. I don't know that the other guys are, are going to sign up for that, but um, so um, hang in there and uh, enjoy 2021. It can't be worse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, look, uh, Phil, you've been an awesome addition to the show. We look forward to doing this again next year. I love how um, Phil brings some unique takes. John brings some science. Devin likes to push us a little bit. And I think that we balance each other really nicely. I appreciate the energy you guys bring to this and the passion you have for both DFS and helping people uh, win some contests here. So thank you so much, uh, you know, viewers, listeners for sticking with us to the end of this episode and the end of this season. And we look forward to trying to help you guys out again, uh, next season. So be sure to check out all that content over at footballguys.com. We appreciate you. This is our season finale, but keep your eyes peeled for maybe a Devin special along the way in the playoffs. On behalf of John Lee, Devin Knotts, and Phil Alexander, I'm Austin Lee saying thank you for watching and thanks for being a football guy. Be sure to check out all of our content over at footballguys.com slash DFS by clicking the button in front of Devin's face. And if you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, be sure to press the button that's on Phil's face. And if you want to see our latest video, <laughs> click that giant box that's in front of John Lee's face. Check all that stuff out. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching.